Okay, so while pilot non-flying does the external walk-around, pilot flying uh, continues the cockpit preparation. And the first thing to do is uh, extinguish all the white lights. So we turn on the crew supply and fuel pumps. are on. After that, uh, we check the cockpit voice recorder. Uh, we put the ground to on and push the test button. There should be a sound every four seconds. So four seconds, second sound, so that's good. We erase what was done before and the test is completed. Uh, then we turn on the ADRS system to nav. So one, and battery, and then second, and third. After this, the system resets and starts the uh, initial procedure, and it will take around uh, seven to 10 minutes uh, for the plane to complete it. In the meantime, we set the exterior lights of the plane. Uh, so we turn on the nav, uh, strobe lights go to auto, and we'll leave the beacon light off for now. We'll turn it on uh, during the engine start. Uh, then we turn on the seatbelt side, no smoking sign, and emergency exit lights to iron position. All right, when, we, when we're done with that, we check the landing elevation. It should be in auto. And there is a very small difference between auto and manual. Uh, it could be like, for example, like this. And it's really hard to spot from, from where the pilot flying is usually sitting. So we check it. It won't turn on if we don't pull it. So we check if it's in auto. Uh, then uh, we regulate the pack flow. Uh, if the cabin is warm already, we can turn it to low. And then we check the battery. Battery 28 volts and 28.3 volts. We can see this near the batteries. And uh, the last thing to do is the engine fire test. Engine fire test will be done similar to the APU fire test. We press the test button. Engine one and engine two. After engine fire warning test, uh, we check audio switching is in normal position. And then the uh, third occupant audio panel uh, is on and is set to PA. That means that uh, the cockpit voice recorder will also record what the cabin crew is saying uh, to the pilot. This is important. So it's on. And uh, we check the maintenance panel. If the maintenance guys didn't leave any uh, switches on, uh, it doesn't show any lights. So that means that it's good. After that, we go down to center instrument panel and we check the ISIS, so this is a analogical, analog, yeah, analog instrument that shows uh, our position to the horizon. So it's good, and we check that anti-skid and nozzle steering is in on position. So it's just on, and we're done here. Uh, after the central panel, we go down to the pedestal and turn on the brightness brightness on the MCDU, and on the right side and. ACP1 is on, we would check the sound and the connection. Um, weather radar is currently on, should be off. Very important, so it's off. And then we check that the thrust levers are in zero and down. Engine master switches are off. And ignition normal. Working brake is on. And then we go to the pilot non-flying panel because at this point pilot non-flying would be doing the walk around. So we hold him. And also brightness. Anti-gas in standby. Everything looks good. 
Uh, also on the top of the pedestal panel, we have the switching switches. So we, there should be, all four of them should be in normal. So all are in normal. Good. Um, also what we have here on the pedestal, uh, at the lower part of the pedestal, is the gear extension switch. The red one. And it can be pulled up and then we can manually extend the gear. Uh, it should be in, down and stone position like this. So it's done. After that we do the FMGS and we won't go into detail on this video uh, but you will find the link in the description to the previous video we've done which goes into more detail uh, into A320 FMGS and how to fill up. Okay, after checking we go to the glare shield panel, uh, we turn on the lights and uh, the lights are turned on by two switches over here so we turn them and turn them on. Uh, then flight directors, then we check the instruments went to dash dot dash dot and it's automatic speed holding and heading. Uh, the initial altitude will be 3000 feet. Uh, so we yeah, set the 3000. Good, and QNH for today is 1008. So we set the left and the right side on 1008. Uh, we check the instruments and they should both show nav and the magnitude can be in tens or twenties yeah good and then everything else looks set all right we're almost prepared uh, we can see that the doors are not closed uh, so we check with the cabin crew and and the ground staff uh, when they are planning to close the doors and then we'll do the uh, normal pushback and startup of the aircraft before pushback uh, commences, we check the fuel one more time. So we have 3.4 tons on board. Uh, we also check that MCDUs would be set my side to take off, your side to flight plan. That's good. Seat belts should be adjusted. And then we complete the before start checklist down to the line. So before start checklist down to the line. Okay. Windows and doors. Windows doors, so windows are locked and doors we can see are still open. We hope that they will close very soon just before pushback. And beacon. Beacon. We turn on the beacon. Signs. Signs, signs are on. Signal signs are on, non-smoking signs are on. ADIRS. ADIRS are in that position. We have everything set up and we all can also see our position on the navigation display. Fuel quantity were already yep. checked. Uh, Takeoff data. Takeoff data is set. We have V1, 135, BR 140, V2 140. That's and not really very re relevant because we won't be doing a takeoff, but just yeah, check the second. And barometric ref sets 1008 on my side and 1008 on your side. And cross check. All right, so checklist down to line is completed. And now we'll start the pushback.